Hello. It is a lovely Tuesday Good morning, and um, I've realised that it's the first of May today, which means that in just a week I will be turning twenty. I will be turning twenty in a week. I don't. I don't feel like I've aged since I was sixteen. Problem is, I can't even spend my last day, uh, like week of being nineteen, like my last week of being a teenager. I can't even spend it doing anything fun. I'll be revising the entire time. Like, why? Also means that I'm probably gonna be home in a month. Like, wow, that's crazy. Uh, I can't remember when I came up to Bangor. I think it was about three weeks ago. So I'm already nearly halfway through. That's really scary. I'm all showered up and ready for the day, so whilst I'm waiting, I'm gonna have a look at my news for a topic to talk about today. The topic I've decided to talk about today isn't very, like, recent, uh, as in, like, this article that I'm, I'm, like, referencing from is, like, from a week ago or so, uh, but it's something that I've studied in my degree, and it's nice to see a development as, like, I've only just finished studying it, and now there's developments in the field, it's fantastic. But basically, uh, it's about the bees and how the EU has finally started supporting a complete or near complete ban on neo t neonicotinoid uh, like pesticides fertilizers uh, which is fantastic like incredible if you don't know what neonicotinoids are they're like the most like, widely used pesticides and insecticides in the world like everyone not everyone uses them because they have been banned in places thanks to research on the effects on uh, invertebrates like bees um, but they're still the most widely used insecticide in the world. And basically recent research has outlined the catastrophic effect that it has on insects, but specifically uh, bee species. Um, it doesn't, like, the, basically, oh, I can't even word. These insecticides are administered to crops where they then leach into, uh, into the soils and then into neighbouring flowers. So the, the thing is, is that the insecticides don't, impact the bees from the crop itself but actually from non-target plants uh, like uh, flowers on, on a bank of a field so the thing that's the incredible thing is that they're not actually uh, directly influencing the bees and that means that they're not in uh, strong enough toxicities to kill the bees however it does stop their homing ability and for a bee a homing ability is really vital because uh, bees have to travel miles upon miles every single day to get uh, pollen from plants. Um, so if they can get all the way there and then their homing gets fucked up, then they fly back in whatever direction they think they're meant to be going in, but they, they're not going in the right direction. They don't know where to turn. They tend to follow like lines and landscapes, but if they don't know where to turn because their homing's off, then they like they get lost and they die. And Basically, neonicotinoids have been attributed to this characteristic of uh, colony collapse disorder, where entire colonies of bees and other species can be lost in, well, days. Now, in the EU, bans for this, uh, these neonicotinoids started in 2013, but we didn't ban all of them. We only banned, I think, three types. I can't remember the names of the types. I'm not that clever. Um, and so that applies to the majority of crop types. However, you could still... Um, argue for extreme cases, which I think is a bit stupid. So you could say, oh my, my, I've, get, I've got a real insect problem, I really need these pesticides, and then the EU would be like, yeah, sure, you fine, you can use them in this circumstance. And the EU has proposed total bans uh, since last year, and I think last November, uh, Michael Gove, who is our, who is now our Environment Secretary, somehow, despite the fact he fucked up the education system, um, he said that he he would like the UK would back these total bans. Uh, problem is obviously there's conflict in there where farmers don't want that to happen. They want to be able to use them. Uh, since the partial bans and such and almost total bans, it hasn't actually been that much of an impact on uh, on bees. Like they haven't stopped dying, and I think that's because. Uh, it doesn't. It you can't just stop the chemicals being there. They're administered on crops in such a, a large volume that really they're going to be sticking around in the soils for a long time. Their half lives are quite long. These neonicotinoids, so they're going to be sticking around for a while. Hence, why there's no current like super trends in bee increases. Basically, the point of this being in the news is that now the EU has supported these total bans, which is fantastic. 
uh, and if they come into effect, which I hope they do, and I hope that Britain follows suit despite the fact that we're going to be leaving the EU, I, I think that they can only use neonicotinoids when they're inside, so if it's in a greenhouse, where pollinators don't actually get access to the plants. So I think it's a, a ray of hope, and um, it's something I really care about is bees. Um, they're not like a species I'd like to study in the future, but it's always a species that I've noticed has been on decline. Uh, I used to see bees all the time when I was younger, but now they're quite rare and you often see them just dead on the pavement. So it's quite nice to see the widespread community, uh, like for the most part, accepting these bans and saying they're a good thing, because they are, because without pollinators, are pretty much screwed. Our food systems are dead, our like plant regeneration cycles are dead. So we need the bees. So it's great to see that we're doing something about it properly, like really knuckling down on the problems. And there you go, there's the news story for today that didn't come out today. Uh, but yeah, good job. If you see a bee, make sure that you give it some sugar water if it's like lying around and can't fly, give it some sugar water and put it on a plant and let it just sort itself out and then it should have enough energy to fly off again. That's honestly something I've been thinking about patenting or like proposing is people should always have access to sugar water. <laughs> like people should always be carrying a little uh, bottle of sugar water because then if they ever encounter a bee that's dying, you don't have to like leave it if you don't have access to the, to the sugar water and you can always help them up and I feel like that could possibly have a big effect if everyone was doing it, if the government demanded you do it, it could be quite interesting. I've been thinking about that for about a year now. I don't know how feasible it would be, but I think it's a great idea. I mean, well, of course I'd think my own idea was a good idea, but you know, let me know what you think. sorting out my laundry for the day. Um, I won't be able to put it on till later, but um, I have just prepared it all so I know what I'm going to put on first. I'm going to have to do two lots, which is very disappointing because that will set me back a lovely four pounds. It's looking pretty grey out there, so I've put on my coat. I, mean, I don't put my coat on that much. Like I, I find any excuse not to wear a coat. Even when it's raining, I'm like, I don't need a coat. But now, I don't have any jumpers because they're all in the wash. <laughs> so I kind of have to. Ali just got here, so we can go to the library. Um, and what what did she say? It doesn't matter what I said. What you said? Right, what she said. We could have a cuddle now, because then we won't be wanting one when we're there. It makes sense. Any excuse, huh? Any excuse. We tried the library and it was full. <laughs> so we're now not going to the library, and we're going to do work at home instead. Yeah, bought myself some lunch. Eddie bought a fuckload of porridge oats and now she's browsing the freezers. Fun. Yeah, I'm just gonna have to work at home now. I'm gonna find it really hard not to be distracted. We have found a dog. <laughs> hey, Rocky. Did you play football? Come on. Come on. Oh, he's done you. He's done you. Oh, I'm well done. Do not make me. Shit. I just got feedback from my uh, project plan and risk assessment, and what they've written on it is. Fantastically researched and overall an amazing effort. I haven't got a grade back, but that made me feel so happy. Don't know how they'll feel when I change my life, my location though. Get your ear. Get your ear. He's ours now. Aww. Why are you so big? He's so fucking massive, isn't he? <laughs> oh, he's happy. He's happy. Oh my god! In other news, for my lunch, I have a chicken and bacon Caesar triple wrap box and a veggie samosa. Uh, I'm going to do some revision now and quickly check through my um, risk assessment and then send it off to be marked. I'm really, with ha really happy with how well the feedback, how good the feedback was on that thing. Hopefully I can produce a project plan that's good to like show them that it like my grades, well, so that my grades will be good. I'm uh, currently doing some revision, uh, but in the meantime, I'm also, I've got my little brother to send me the code for our Iron Man DVD we have at home so that we can watch it tonight. 
Uh, I thought it was quite cool because I, I completely forgot we owned it on DVD. So I asked them to check the case to see if there's one of the download codes that they sometimes have with like Blu rays and stuff. Um, and there was one. So I can um, watch it anywhere I like. So I'm just downloading it now. Yeah, so I just got a text from Ellie. And she's always worried about like how much money she's spending. She's always like, oh, I'm spending too much money. But she just sent me a text saying, I want a takeaway tonight. So, uh, did uh, contradicting yourself there, Ellie. But apparently, there's a chance we'll get a takeaway tonight. And I like takeaways, so I'm not that opposed to it. It's just money. So Ellie and I have decided to get Indian takeaway. Uh, she's just on her way here now to pick up some of her stuff that she left here, and then we're going to walk up to hers. I think I'll place the order now so that we walk up, and then it will take less time for like overall to, to, to arrive for us. And we're going to watch Iron Man. And uh, I think, I'm pretty sure anyway, that she should be coming down the road pretty fucking soon. Yep, perfect timing. There she is. <laughs> I am incredible. You're cold. Okay, let's get you in. Apparently we've got second... Second choice, second uh, guesses about whether we're gonna get a takeaway or not. It's up to you. No, it's not. It's I've got you. the money for it. I just don't want to make you spend money. Well, but I'm happy doing it. I don't care. If you want to get takeaway, you can get takeaway. I don't care. And then we won't get any. There's no preference to, for, for me. I would happily eat takeaway, I'd happily eat normal food. I just feel like otherwise it's gonna be a bit of a tricky thing for you because it's just gonna be like chips and beans. I would like a takeaway, but if you don't want to spend money this week as well as next week on meals out, then that's fine. Because I would rather go out for our anniversary than have a takeaway today. So you decide. We'll get a takeaway. Right, and we've ordered the food. Now it's time to run and find it. I didn't say like a faggot, I said, and find it. I'm pretty sure I did anyway. I'm definitely sure I didn't say run like a faggot. If you want to run like a faggot, that's fine. How do faggots run? Isn't a faggot, it? isn't, no, faggot's like a, a meaty thing. It's like giblets, I'm pretty sure. No, oh no, no, faggots aren't that. They're, they're kind of like meatballs. Yeah, we had faggots at the, the pig. <laughs> Waiting for food, I want my takeaway cake. Are you hungry? My stomach rumbled earlier, I'm trying not to think about <laughs> it. Poor tummy. We got the food, the food's coming, the food's coming. <laughs> we have the food in the bag, and it's really windy and cold. And we're cold and windy, and we need to get the tide going. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. We are. That's a feast, isn't it? Hundreds and thousands of rice. Oh, are you excited? Oh. Your um, rice looks really nice. Yeah, I know, it's full of... It's like a garden. <laughs> looks like a garden. <laughs> does look like a garden. <laughs> We're going to sit down and watch some Iron Man. Uh, so we've got naan bread, I've got korma. This is special rice, there's egg and veg in there. And Bombay potatoes, which are quite spicy, but rather nicey. And you've got naan, normal pilau rice, Bombay, and a vegetable balti. Yeah, I think so. Balti, 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 balti. Oh, get on Instagram. <laughs> so nice. We've already gone back for seconds. And we're only like 15 minutes into the film. It's, it's just a shame. It costs so much money, really. Just had a nice little shower before bed. Put my hair up. Now it's time for a pedicure. A nice little toe clipping session. <laughs> How cute. Relationship goals, eh? These aren't strong enough for your... Yes, they are. Be brave. Thank you. I think it's about time we went to bed, don't you? Yeah. yeah. Okay, guys. I think we'll wrap up the vlog here today. If you have enjoyed, make sure you leave a like, comment, subscribe. And if you do that, you will see us every single, every single, single day doing what we do best. Eating. Um, and, uh, yeah, I guess we'll see you guys tomorrow. What are we doing tomorrow? I've got a test. Mm. Yay. I've got an assessment for you. Not a very nice day, but we'll see. What? What is it? <laughs> Look how tiny he was. Is that Cracker? Yeah. Is that Cracker? <laughs> Why is my phone doing this? Oh my god. He's a little baby. Oh, look at me as well. Mm. I'm a little... <laughs> oh, he's so tiny. That's so sweet.
So yeah, we'll see you guys tomorrow for the next day video. Until then, bye bye for now. Oh, and save the bees.